Christ Church members and all of you who found this podcast today. We welcome you here at Christ Evangelical Lutheran Church. Amen. We lo we're located at 30th Diamond and Ridge yes. in Philadelphia. And we have begun in-person worship, so we'd love to have you join us at 1130 for praise and prayer and uh, on any Sunday morning. But in the meantime, we are thankful that God uh, has allowed you to find this podcast this morning. Amen, amen. My worship assistant is Janine Younger amen. and our musician over there, Mr. Glenn Bryan. Amen, amen. amen. Now let us humble ourselves before the throne of grace and, and seek God's care in prayer. Amen, amen. Gracious God, you have placed within the hearts of all your children a longing for your word and a hunger for your truth. Grant that we may know your son to be the true bread of heaven and share this bread with all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 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 This morning's meditation is drawn from the Gospel of John, the sixth chapter, beginning with the first verse. Amen. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up in the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming towards him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him for him, for he himself knew what was going to happen. Philip answered him, six months wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place. So they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as many as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, Gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left up by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the signs that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. 
when, G when Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again into the mountains by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark and Jesus has not yet come to, to them. The sea began, became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat. And they were terrified, but he said to them, it is I, do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat and immediately the boat reached the land towards which they were going. Amen. 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 Uh, Janine, I have a problem this morning. There's way too much to preach on. <laughs> Take your time. You got Way time. Way too much to preach on. Take your time, Pastor. I, I can tell you that, uh, I mean, look at all of the stories that this, this text gives us today. You got the feeding of the 5,000. Yes. Or the hundreds of thousands, or however many people were following Jesus. You got Jesus walking on the water. Yes. That's a whole nother story in in and of itself. Amen. And then, and then you've got some, some smaller uh, arcs. Of, of stories going on, like the one that, that that little line in there that said they people were gonna take him by force and make him king, but he withdrew. Yes, went to the mountain. And we could talk about the fact that king was not what he was here to do. Amen. He Amen. was to be a representative of God. Yes. And that job is what he was most important, uh, mo most what was most important for him. Yes, yes. But there's another story that I'm actually gonna preach on today that that may get lost in the glare of these big miracles Amen. going on uh, around us in this. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it in this context yes. for you because we would miss it. We miss stuff like this. That's why Bible study is good. Amen. Amen. You know, Wednesday. Oh, oh that's right. What, what, what time is Bible study? Wednesday, seven o'clock. That's your commercial break right Amen. there. Wednesday, Amen. Wednesday, seven o'clock. <laughs> on Zoom, right? Yes, yeah, yes. yeah. Okay. You're well, welcome. Join us. Uh, anyway, that is the, the, the story is it, it gets overlooked because of these blockbuster um, miracles that were taking place. Amen. The story says. And again, you can go back and read it, John 6, chapter 1 through 21. You can go back and read it for yourself. But the story says in here that, that the disciples, Jesus had all of the, 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 the uh, folks sit down. Yes, on the grass. On Amen. the grass. And somehow, they got fed. Amen. <laughs> with, with. Somehow. Somehow. Now that's the part I, I, I want because you see, it, it, it kind of gets overlooked. I mean, we know that 12 baskets were full, uh, you know, picked up after, after the fact. Thing. We also read in the text, uh, or, or missing some things in the text, nobody was complaining. Not at all. It appears that everybody had that feel. Yes. And that everybody was satisfied. Amen. Amen. And I want to kind of think about that for a moment. How did that happen? How did that happen? How could, in the midst of all of this, I mean, what did the disciples say? Even if we had six months worth of wages, we couldn't Amen. feed all these people. Amen. That's what they said. We can't feed all these people. But it was a test, right? Jesus had a number of tests going on. Amen. Amen. Some wanted to see whether or not he truly was the Son of God. Amen. God may have wanted to demonstrate for him that there are these miracles are there not for God's sake, for but sake. to let you know that the one God sent amen, amen. has been endowed with the power of God. Yes, he is. Amen. And we call him Jesus. Jesus, amen. So he can walk on water. Yes, he can, amen. He can heal the sick. Yes, he can, Pastor, amen. And he demonstrated all of those yes. things, but I'm still, still stuck see. on how all them people got fed. Because of Jesus, amen. Because that's where it, the story really goes to us. 
You see, we sometimes think we don't have anything. Amen. Or we ain't got enough. Amen, amen. And what do we do? We keep it hidden and out of sight. For a later time. Amen. We don't let people know all the stuff we got. You know, even now, if I were to ask you how much money you got, you know that's an impolite thing to ask somebody. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> people don't need to know my business and then uh, what we say. And we don't tell nobody how much money we have Amen. or don't have. Amen. And then, of course, if somebody asks us for something, then, of course, we ain't got it because we ain't got enough of what we think we should have in the first place. Amen. That's so so we're good. always saying we're too poor right. to do anything. But one thing about the, the power of the Holy Spirit that, that, that's just fascinating to me. Okay, tell me about it. Amen. That power is able to unleash a heart that's tied up. Amen. Amen. Unleash a spirit that got crushed and, 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 and is in, a, in the closet, if Amen. you will. It, it, it hides everything and it keeps it away from everybody. But when the spirit, when one is touched by the spirit, what you have, regardless of how much it is, may be a benefit not only up to you but of others around amen. you amen amen pastor what jesus did with the crowd was to unleash the hoarding amen. that they had been going on he said to them i know that may not be enough out here because i know some of y'all are thinking that but let the spirit of the lord be upon you and i tell you we've got enough and then some amen yes we do amen pastor. that's what i want you to know today yes you see it's not what we've got, but it's how we use what God has already given us. Amen. He's placed these little bits in our hands. Amen. What are we going to do with all these little bits? I make a, a lot. <laughs> Amen. I've had a number of Amen. conversations about my grandparents in particular and my, my parents, and, and we were talking about how they were able to feed us on such little food. Amen. You know, we, we came through a transition period in America uh, and I'm 65 now, but in that 65 years, I've seen pretty much the complete transition from a rural communities where most of us used to live, yes, where you would farm and farming was part of your daily life. Amen. In order to exist, you had a little farm, a little, little something. And when you got into the city, you had a little garden, in the garden, in the yard. Amen. And, and you learned to can. Yeah. That's what my parent, my mom did in particular. She would can and, 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 and we had seasonal crops. So you had to be prepared uh, when, when that crop came in to take care of that crop. So if you wanted it in the wintertime, because you ain't going to find strawberries in the wintertime in the Amen. snow. Amen. So you had to prepare them so that Preserve you could pull them out in the middle of winter. Yes, yes. So you did a lot of preparation. A lot of your life was spent around preparing for what was to come next. In order to feed the family, in order to take care of matters, you had to prepare for what was there. Yes. So if you prepared, then you had these things slipped away somewhere. Amen. They were in the closet. Yes. Amen. They were in the pantry. Yes. They were in the freezer. Amen. <laughs> they were slipped away somewhere. somewhere. But if someone asked you, did you have anything? I ain't got nothing. I don't have enough to go to the grocery store this week. Amen. But that don't mean that you didn't have what you needed. Yes. Jesus unleashed the spirit on the people. And they found out that they had more than they knew. Amen. And isn't that what God has been doing with us? Unleashing the spirit on us and letting us know that there is more to us than just our individual things that we have, our individual gifts that when they are brought together and knitted together by the Spirit, we not only have enough food to eat, Amen. but we have enough of everything to share with one another. Amen. You Amen. see, this nation, this world has been blessed. Yes, we have. Yet we have hungry people out there. Yes. We have people who are, who are without houses. We have people who, who are psychologically uh, disenfranchised. Yes. Uh, and we sometimes put all the blame on them when in reality their needs can be met Amen. if we just let them be met. Amen. Amen. Amen, Pastor. God's given us more wisdom yes. to grow more crops than anybody, yet we don't feed everybody. Amen. It's not about 
whether or not we can is whether or not we, we will. will. Amen. Amen, Pastor. <laughs> Amen. Jesus took, a, took the, the spirits, knit them into a community, and taught them how to share. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Now that's power. That's power. Amen. That's grace. Yes, that's grace. That's justice. Yes. To teach us that we have what we need. Now let's figure out how to use it. Amen. The word of the Lord is a word that teaches, instructs, communicates God's will to us, shows us, in no uncertain terms, God's plan. Amen. Amen. But it's up to us to follow it. Yes, it is. To walk the walk and, and do the talk. Amen. Amen, Pastor. So I challenge you this week. Opportunities are going to come your way to provide assistance to somebody. Yes. Opportunities yes. are going to come your way to be a helpmate to somebody. The Spirit of the Lord be upon you. Let that Spirit guide you. Let that Spirit allow you to offer the assistance that somebody's going to need. Amen. And you will find that you will be blessed. Yes. Beyond what you even can imagine. Amen. But that's the way God's spirit works. Yes. It's prayer time. Amen, amen. Time to allow the spirit of the Lord be upon us. It's prayer time. Yes, let us pray. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. We pray for the church. Blessed the ministries of our neighboring congregations. Empower churches throughout the world and encourage missionaries who accompany global neighbors kindle in us a spirit of collaboration that all people may know your loving works hear us O oh god your mercy is great we pray for creation send rain to lands experiencing drought and come to the aid of those enduring sweltering heat nurture wheat and barley crops grown from for the nourishment of your people and conserve aquatic habitats and fish populations hear us O oh God your mercy is great we pray for those who govern cast out arrogance selfishness and corruption and instruct those who lead to practice compassion and humility. Inspire them with a vision of the common good and a commitment to endure, I'm sorry, a commitment to ensure that all who hunger are fed. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for those bowed down by heavy burdens. Those who are unemployed or underemployed, those unable to find affordable housing, and those without health insurance, console those who grieve and hear the cries of those who call to you for healing. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for this assembly. Deepen our resolve to use what we have to serve those in need. When we worry that we do not have enough resources for ministry, assure us of your abundance. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We give thanks for those who have died as you, as you sustain them through all their days. So dwell in our hearts that we may have the power to comprehend with all the saints that the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge 
Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We lift these in all our prayers to you. O God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the people in God's church said, Amen. 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 I'm Reverend Jesse Brown, the preacher here at Christ Evangelical Lutheran Church. Janine Younger is our worship assistant. Amen. And Glenn Bryant is our musician. Amen. And we welcome you and encourage you to come to our in-person worship at 1130 on Sunday mornings. Yes. Any Sunday morning. Every Sunday morning. Oh, I ever saw you <laughs> that way. Amen. Right? Amen. <laughs> and join us for that. But for now, we are glad that you are able to find this podcast. So let us join in the singing of our uh, closing hymn. Glenn, what do we got? Earth and All Stars, 558. Okay. Earth and All Stars, Lord. Cloud rushing planet sing to the Lord a new song. Oh, victory, cloud shouting. I too will praise him with a new song. Knowledge and truth, love sounding wisdom, sing to the Lord a new song. Daughter and son, love praying members, sing to the Lord a new song. God has done more. I too will praise him with a new song. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And the people in God's church said, Amen. 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 Amen.